This is the Doc Psychology Podcast with Lynn Bokey, Todd Langston, and Art Ortiz. Well, I've actually te- I've texted Caesar that question directly before, and, and yeah, so I it was a client I think he had sent me that might be why I tra- initiated, and I asked him if a dog is intact and they do not get a chance to mate. You know, do they get frustrated? And he said yes. And and I asked if he suggests that they, you know, kind of have it taken care of. Not necessarily to mate. I think there's actually services, believe it or not, that can take care of it. It's called OnlyFans. Yeah, right. Dog, doggy OnlyFans. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, it will. That is, that's legitimate. And, you know, I'm actually dealing with that with a neighbor right now. I have a, a, a guy who has a little chihuahua, intact chihuahua and a, the dog across the street is in heat. And he says, my dog hasn't slept in three days. And he's just out there fucking sniffing and marking all that in the dog's front. Give him something to do. Go, go, for, go for a run with him or something, for crying out loud. Yeah, dude, that's that's what I'm going to tell my my neighbor to do, man. Just go for a run, brother. Big well, older man. He is, right? I don't, I don't give anybody fucking advice. You guys, do you guys give I – I do not give unsolicited advice. No. You know what I mean? He just, oh, like, I, was, yeah, I, I thought you said you were talking to your neighbor. Yeah, because I was out front walking. I had a student with me, and he was walking up the street, and he was just out there because there was a house for sale. And we were talking, and he goes, "Man, he goes, this dog across the way has been intact, is uh, is in heat. My boy hasn't slept for three days." I'm not going to be like, "Dude, you know what you need to do." <laughs> Doesn't he know that you work with dogs? Everybody out here knows I work with dogs. And that's that's a solicited question, man. That is not no way. People do that shit all the time. They'll talk to you like a friend, but they really want to know something. I just say, just ask your question. Nah, but it was, uh, so you could, yeah, that, it definitely, it, to answer that question, yes. Well, that's that's an opinion. I don't know that I want, I don't know where your I, dog's going to get it. I, I, I definitely believe an you intact I mean? dog gets frustrated. I absolutely believe an intact dog gets frustrated outside sure. of what he says. Uh, does it need to be rubbed out twice a year? I mean, I, I think we do that a little bit more than twice a year. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, so it's like twice a week. But the, the point is, is that uh, I understand what I'm doing and I have a willing participant left and right. But uh, a dog, you, he's going to rub it out with another dog that's in heat. They're going to be having puppies. So I don't know how you could possibly have a dog uh, be satisfied twice a year because he's intact. Uh, I understand that they get frustrated. That's absolutely true. But there's other ways to drain that off. Um, that's why you see a lot of dogs that even that that are uh, spayed and neutered, male or female, humping inanimate objects, humping each other because they, they're frustrated. They've got extra energy that isn't being uh, given a proper outlet. Uh, so I, I don't know. I I was in the Marine Corps boot camp, you know, three months. I didn't get to rub it out at all. You had to deal with it, right? So I, I wasn't frustrated at all during three months. I was working out the whole time, learning stuff the whole time. There's no way. I, I'm just really focused on how can you, how can not you, but uh, how can people think that we got to satisfy the dogs twice a year? I, I don't. I don't know that that's... I think, I think what I think some people out there are generating a business idea right now. So um, let him yeah. have it. You can have that business idea. Let, I don't want to stand it. with this, with the images on the side, you know, like they do for the running that that uh, treadmill thing. Could you imagine that going around everywhere? Not nah, be on every other door. <laughs> ding ding ding. Right, I actually that, asked my vet that question. I asked like, um, if how how they do it, and he goes. Exactly what you think they do. Yeah. I mean, how else do you think it's going to happen, right? It's, I mean, <laughs> I asked another vet one, one time, and because I had this uh, intact male that I got from next door, which was amazing freaking dog, like amazing energy, like awesome dog. Um, he, he was five years old when I got him. He was still intact, but I mean, he wasn't walking around like he was frustrated. He wasn't humping everything. He was just a chill dog. Yeah. So well, yeah. He's, he's fulfilled in other areas. Right. Well, you know, in a back. No, because he lived in a backyard. Well, he might have had a different kind of uh, spot in the chain of whether it's the spot in the pack, back of the pack. Maybe he just didn't have that kind of energy to care to do anything else. Are you talking about that white uh, blind dog? Yeah. Yeah, that dog. dog. 
very Definitely. chill. That uh, that that's that dog doesn't ever need to have one rubbed out. <laughs> Well, I guess it's to be clarified, if you were a male intact dog and you were never exposed to uh, an intact female dog, the instinct would probably never be triggered because it has to be hormonally triggered, I would imagine, by the smell. But testosterone, I mean, I think there's a benefit to it if it's regulated. I mean, because it is a regulating hormone. And this is where maybe at the beginning of my career, I was like, yeah, neuter everybody. And I still think, you know, based on the, you know, the way our culture is set up, it's necessary, but uh, – I feel dogs, at least this is my experience, in my opinion, that dogs that have made it tend to be a little bit more balanced. Uh, if, if everything, all be all things being equal, I think they tend to be a little bit more balanced. There's almost like a wisdom about them. There's almost like a wisdom about a maternal dog that's that's had puppies that, you know, you don't see in, in dogs that have it. And you're limited to the female. I mean, in general, I, I would agree with it, the same thing with males, males that have made it. Males that are intact, that have made it and, and gone through full cycles of things, I feel they just have a different vibe about them. I think going through full cycles of things is what the animal is supposed to do. Of and I course. Think it, and that, that is true, you mother nature, but we're, we're domesticated. We're talking about, you know, how, how is anybody going to fulfill that? That's not well, possible. I, I know. I, I was like you, Todd. I, I used to think like spay, neuter every dog, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but when I spend my time in Germany with with that trainer who has a pack of 60 dogs, only two of the dogs were unaltered. And I asked her specifically because that was something that I've been told, even by people that we look up to, right, is that you spay and your dogs. She, she's also fulfilling the dogs, so that, that is a, a huge thing. But I asked she, her, so what happens? What happens? She, what happens? She, hang on, I'm not done. Hang on, I'm not done. I'm agreeing with you. I know. But hang on, I just want to get the stock because I'll forget. Um, and so I asked her, what happens when the, when the female goes in heat? Don't the dogs fight? And she goes, eh, I just separate them. <laughs> like, no, it was no big deal. Like, and she wasn't having like accidental litters and things like that. But she was also a breeder. So she had, you know, she was, it was very controlled. Um, but that really changed my, how I saw things because here she was, you know, and she, I even asked her because uh, it came up in conversation later that I worked for, for Caesar. And she goes, you know, in her broken English, she's like, you know, uh, that's the one thing that I don't like about Caesar that he castrates the animals. He doesn't need to do that. He doesn't do it though. He just works with dogs that are. I think, I think if he probably was back in Mexico, I bet he'd leave things. <laughs> and you know, you, that lady, 100%, that's what I thought too. I, I've learned a lot from that lady through you, you know, cause of those stories you told. And, I had a guy email me from Argentina and he had a pack of intact dogos that he hunted mountain lions with. And he said, when I'm hunting, I'm fine, but I want to know if I can get these dogs to live at home and be okay at home. And I asked, there's certain times, I don't know if you do this, right? There's certain times I'll just, let me see if Caesar will answer this one. Right. And, and I, and I messaged Caesar and he sent it back and he just said, you have to make being calm as as important as hunting, you know. So you have to make you know calmness as as intense an activity as hunting for it to work. And I don't really know if it made made sense to the guy, you know. And, and that would have been my answer. I have something along those lines of you know you have to you, what you would have to do. And I think that's a good thing for us to talk about because I think it's a common thing. How do you get dogs together? And it, and that was that's the thing. And in this case, they were intact, and this this guy could never get them to be at home. Only work. Well, they're in their uh, predatory state all the time, and there's a a motor pattern or a predatory sequence. And if they're in that all the time when they're out hunting, and like Caesar said, they don't teach them. <laughs> is it a is it a present, big fella? You got a present? Like that in there, Art. Wait, what uh, do you mean? You yes, got enough pass? Sorry, sorry, I meant to put you on mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, like Caesar said, you got to teach them, you know, how to behave at home just as much as they allow the instinctual part and human guiding uh, the hunt. So, they put a lot of effort into that, but they probably put no effort into when they're at home because they just want to relax too. So if they're constantly in that predatory state, they're waiting for something to trigger the sequence all the time. And, uh, you know, you put a bunch of dudes together that are 
meant to be warriors and they're just but you watch like the uh ufc when they put the all the guys in the house and then they're going to find out who's going to be the, the, there's fights all the time you got a bunch of dudes in there and they're competing every other day not necessarily themselves but yeah it's they, they just need to give them something else to do that that right keeps them away from that sequence what you got there art what'd you get man oh it's a it's a usb hub so when i get when i get my whenever my iphone decides to come in um i can hook up ethernet to my phone that's another thing you could do todd actually instead of getting those those things you could just hook up an ethernet cable directly to your laptop uh our it's the <laughs> It's the way that we're wired out here. This is this is kind of the reception out here is really bad. I think what he's saying is take your cable instead of using your Wi-Fi and hook that into your your computer, so you got the actual connection instead mm. of piggybacking. Gotcha. Listen to Lynn doing some technology talk. That, that, what that the fuck? I didn't, I didn't understand where that was coming from. <laughs> Something I weird happened. Partner Adam, but not from you. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good idea. I think I might hook mine up too. So, so, so what we're talking about, let, let's have, you know, this is a good segue for you guys, whoever wants to chime in. What would be, you know, I think we could probably say if you were to list, if we were to all put what's the 10 most common things we deal with, I bet we have a, our lists are pretty similar. And I think one of the top three or four is people trying to coexist with dogs. And the misnomer that they think they're they're the ones responsible for the dogs getting together versus sometimes they got lucky, and then they try to do it again and it blows up. And you start to get fights with dogs that live together for a long time, uh, and and what they're not realizing is that they didn't have the grip on it that maybe they perceived, and just what it takes. Like, what would you suggest to somebody that called you up and they're trying to get? Their dogs who had previously, let's say, got along, and you, we can run this a million different scenarios, but that previously got along that are now fighting. You know, let's say somebody, you get this call, you know, so my dogs, we've, we've got these two dogs, there's a three-year-old and a, and a five-year-old, and we've had them, you know, for three years. And in the last three months, and they always kind of throw in the out of nowhere, they started fighting. And, you know, you start talking to them and they fight over, you know, maybe some food was there and then maybe it was over what they'll call the jealousy over maybe mom or, and you know what I mean? You know, they're out in the fence and they saw another dog along the fence line and they fought out there. What, what do you think is the advice people need to hear? And I know we could bring, we can go back all the way back to as minutia wise as you want, but what do you guys, how were you? where you come in on. I mean, every, every part of that has its own little scenario. Can, can I briefly go over the pattern that happens? Sure. Okay. So, you, so people have a dog, this is a zero to 100. At some point things will branch off. I'm just going to give the, the common uh, thread there. When dogs fight, everybody's like, what the hell just happened? Right? Maybe even the dog said, what just happened? And then it might be a week to a month to a year later. Uh, before they fight again. This time, everybody's like, what the hell? Why is this happening? The the third time, fourth time, fifth time, that's where they start separating them for sure. They start separating them. And then there comes this point in time, depending on which dog is which, if the one is constantly defending themselves over and over and over again, that's the why, that's the why it takes three months, six months, a year before they're fighting all the time, because now he's become defensive. And when they separate them so much, what happens when they open the door, they just pick up right where they left off. You're going to hurt me at some point, so I'm going to hurt you first. Yep. So anywhere along that line, I can I can tell you what what I would do. And there's a point where I highly recommend you either find a home for the dog or prepare your life for being so highly managed and requirement of discipline, consistency. And yeah. it's just, you're just a jailer at that point, create and rotate literally. Let's you can talk about that. Okay. Let's talk well, about that because people don't one. think that, that people think that no matter what, they can always make it work, get along. What is it that it takes for people to understand that, look, there's going to be a point 
Like I have my way that I, I if somebody calls me up and they give me a certain description of things, you already know walking into it that the li- the likelihood of this is, you know, we're talking really low single digit percentage. You know, you're if, if you just for whatever reason you have this particular person that just didn't have the knowledge, but everything else is in place. Um, wh- I mean, what does that take? Because it's it's common. It's it's crazy common that the the, the force the force compatible. Yet, I, you know, one of my. Uh, you know, very rarely do I have anybody that has two or more dogs fighting for long periods of time or even just a couple of times. Are they able to have a f- carefree or even keep the dogs together? One of the couples, they were, they went, they lived seven years of sleeping in separate beds with each other. One had one dog and another had the other two dogs and they would switch it out. And first thing I did is take the dogs in and said, go on a fucking vacation. Yeah. Nothing's going to change until you go on vacation and, and find out who each other are again and fall in love <clears throat> because it doesn't matter what I do. So that happened. They did keep all the dogs and these are big dogs, like Dane mix types of dogs and pit, you know, and, and they were three of them fighting. It's crazy. That is insane. The love for the dog to keep all that together, but very rare. Does it, I mean, your life has to become very, very structured. That means the dog's life has to become structured first to understand. That means that there needs to be a high level education, understanding how to how to do this, and that needs to be passed on to the owners. And it needs to be passed on to the owners. No, no board and train give it off for a couple of hours. This has to be done. Yeah, over it's it's, it's scary if you're not careful. The only, the only way things are going to change is if we change the owners change what they're doing, right? And so. That's why like, I got the idea probably from both you guys, uh, the, the immersion, um, you know, both you guys offered that. And I was like, I'm going to do that too. You know? So working with uh, the people in their home, where they live, you know, the immersion program that we, that we do is you know, a minimum of three weeks where I go in and work with the dogs um, you know, in the environment where they're at. So if let's say they are fighting, well, I'm going to be creating a structure, a certain structure that the owners have to maintain. And there is, I, I think like, there's a big misconception. I think that's where you're both you guys were trying to get at is that things like we can get them to, to be coexist. I think we have to change the way of what socialization is for them because coexisting in the same room is socialization. People think dogs playing is socialization. And I think that's where things get confusing. You know, so people want, oh, I want them to play, but they fight when they play. Well, you want them to coexist, right? Let's get them to be in the same room. Let's start there. If we can't do that, then we can't get them to be playing. <laughs> find one thing to succeed at and grow from there um, and these well, people will have the dogs around that i'm talking about they're able to, but they could never leave them alone they had to you know, that's what you're doing uh, i have the, i have a similar thing but i i travel and it's a day home intervention and uh it's it's a sink or swim type of thing but uh yeah so let me just back up on that pattern real quick uh, before it gets that extreme, there is a short window where you can solve this problem and not have to be so managed in life and careful. But it is a very small window that nobody's looking out of first until it's suddenly in your face. And that's where your small window exists. But if we start learning. So what do you how- mean by small window? Uh, small window because they haven't got to the point where one is on uh, defense every time they haven't separated them yet. Huh? To me, to me, where like the thing that they, once they're, it's like, if they're fighting on, on eyes, like you're screwed. Like as soon as it becomes to where they can catch a visual clue, just of any type of visual aspect of the other one and it triggers a fight. You know what I mean? So that's when you're saying you have this short window. I, if you get there to me, you're it's, uh, it can happen, but it can't happen in that environment. You know what I mean? That's, that's- yeah. It, it, you're you're right. And the the part I was talking about for people to get on, they they're not seeing the eye part. Their short window is you're separating them and you're not putting them back together. There's not right. much time. The window they're not looking at yet is the eyes and all of the stuff that they're talking about weeks, months before they actually have that first contact. That is the absolute best time to understand the difference. Well, they left each other alone in the beginning. What do you mean they left each other alone? Well, yeah. you know, they, they just didn't, they weren't in the same room very often. They would you know, never laid next to each other. That's called avoidance. 
<laughs> and you're in a small territory that it has to be divided at some point, and the water's on my side, fuck stick. Don't come on my side over here. And then it starts because there's no outlet, no structure, no dividing line in, in rank. That's the window they're not seeing. By the time they see the fighting, that's where you've got a small window to fix everything. Mm. When I just described what when I describe this to humans so they kind of feel it, is I, I kind of go in this so you you know, when you and your husband or you and your partner get in a fight and one of you storms out and you don't resolve it and you come back in, like how quick and easy is it to get back into a fight? And you get in a little fight again and you storm out. And after two or three of those, I mean, you're, that's what divorce and stuff's about. You just get to the point where you're so nose, eyes, ears triggered, where you hear their voice from, you know, 20 feet away and you start to just be like, God damn motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you see, like, you see a photo of them and you tense up. And people have to understand, like, a dog's going through the same thing. So to your point, if, if are you explaining that sw- small window to be like, and let's, let's go ahead aware. and say, you miss once- it and they fight. How do you, re- you know, to me, we know how to repair it. That's the small window too, is that once you have that fight, the small window is if you separate, you're creating what we're explaining where you're now in a fight with your spouse. Yeah, once so you that, start separating, it's almost over. That's why almost it's always. a small window. You get two or three fights because they don't fight yep. right after each other. They fight and there might be a week, a month, six months down the line, they'll have another one. And then that will shrink up when they, because they're far apart. Then they start shrinking up and they become so visible. This happens all the time for no reason. Yeah. It's not for no reason. It's ha- been happening. So their window of time is when they, before they start separating, when they're fighting enough to where you're like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Don't ask each other anymore. Find somebody who can help you. That is the point that anybody listening, if your dogs have fought once, twice, don't wait. Don't wait. You get to the point where you separate. I'm telling you, you have to almost separate, separate. But let me... I'm sorry. Let me just say this one thing. I, I want to make sure uh, we understand not just that they're going to fight and they're they're bad in this. Sometimes, especially the ones who have been defending themselves so long and worried more worried till the finally they get to a point where they're being uh, aggressive. Uh, let's look at that uh, sequence, that predatory sequence. At what point does the predator attack? right? Or chase, right? So at that point, when the prey realizes that they are the target, that's terror. It's it, instinct. I got to, I got, oh, I li- could you imagine living like that on a daily basis? And my only reprieve is after I get in a fight, you separate me. And now I got to live like this again. That is what I'm more concerned about is learning how your dog feels and why is he feeling like this? He's not doing it because it's a cool word. That's what, that's yeah, that's what happens at dog parks all the time, by the way. That's what's what, oh, yeah. That's why that's what happens at dog parks all the time. I'm not. I'm by the way. I'm not anti dog park like most people are. Um, not that I go to them either. I used to. Um, I created my own dog park. I'll talk about that later. But you know, a lot of times when 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 I ask questions like, "Oh, my dog used to be really good with dogs," and I'm like, "What happened?" Well, I don't know. Like, no, what happened? I started digging and like, oh, well, one time we were at the dog park and he was attacked by a dog and now he feels the need to defend himself. So now he's reactive because he sees a dog. And the last time he was around a dog, they were pulling him apart and he was trying to bark at them and, and you know, bite the dog back because now he's, he's, in, he's in defense. Every time I see a dog, I got to be defensive. So I'm trying to make that dog go away. Right. So that's we created can, the we pattern. Can look at that point we had last week with the uh, uh, reinforcing a, an emotion. So we may not reinforce the emotion of fear of getting attacked, but we are reinforcing the behavior before the fear mm-hmm. needs to be there. Cool. And, and so like you're saying there are, when, when they say what, when you say what happened, they find out it was a dog park. I bet you, if you asked more, you'd find out they lifted the dog up. Oh, they yeah. carried it out. For sure. They cried. And they don't, every time they go back to the dog park, they're on the lookout, which is telling the dog to be on the lookout too. And so it's just like, <laughs> Why would I go in there? You are afraid to go in. So here, in, in, here at the social that, that we do, um, you know, we it's it's all movement, right? So there's no no owner standing around. Everyone's moving, and we had last weekend we had the, the first social we've had since the, the spring. We had 37 dogs, um, but it we had this one incident where a dog 
was guarding like a certain area and that's why we keep things moving and so the dog was guarding a certain area and went after another dog and it just it was a bunch of sound you know sometimes you get those dogs just ah, make a bunch of sound i stepped and i stopped it but they were still kind of intense with each other like like staring at them so that one of the owners was like that dog needs to live needs to leave i'm like nope that dog is not leaving and you because you agreed you agreed that you're not allowed to interact with any of the dogs myself and all the other trainers are the only ones that can interact with the dogs we got both dogs on leash. We start walking them, start walking them. And as soon as their body language changed, they became a little softer. I took the leashes off and they were fine. And they've been fine since it was just that one incident. But had we separated them at that moment, they were, every time they saw each other, it would have created a fight. You know? Absolutely. Especially if they would have left. That dog's got to leave. Yeah. And, and what that does to the human, oh my God, I got kicked out of the social from Dog Fit Dallas. Oh my God, I'm, I'm horrible. My dog, so now we created something. It's a ricochet. But what was the dog guarding? I don't remember what it was. I was at a distance. I just saw it from a distance. I saw the dog posture a little bit. Like maybe it was a smell. I don't know. Maybe it could have been poop. Could have been rabbit poop. I don't know. Okay. But that's that's modern human right now. Is like they're they're staying in something hard is not taught. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. So difficult things are almost discouraged, right? So instead of I mean we talked about that before the whole fear free movement. Yeah. That's basically hey don't go through anything nervous. And so, you know, that's where humans are at. Humans are at the exact same place. So instead of going, hey, man, that was kind of sketchy. Let's hang out here until everything relaxes. Everybody leaves at the worst possible time. You know, everybody gets mad, adds a little whole layer to it. And, and then they seek training. It's like, well, dude, just use some common sense. Like, just go back. It's always the, for whatever reason, we're taught to get back on the horse, right? So we're taught that when you're nervous, if you leave something nervous, uh, you're always going to be nervous, but we're not taught that that's literally the end. That's every behavior, right? So if you're mad at something, if you're, everything is the, how you end something is how you pick it up. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, behaviorally speaking, that's something that I think has saved me personally as a human, so much grief and so much emotional energy by understanding there's things that I don't want to take in and take on and look at, because if I end it that way, what it means and just knowing that there's a time to just go, that's it. And like when, when to just, when to do that, the, the power of that. And then also knowing the reverse of is you got to stick it out, you know, and knowing the power of that. I remember um, Mr. Pickles fell in the pool one time and I was standing right there and I could see him struggling, but I wasn't going to do anything because I know I needed him to find his way out. I was standing right there. He wasn't, nothing was going to happen to him. And he struggled, he struggled, he struggled, he struggled, and then he found it. I was taking my flip-flops off. I was getting ready to get in the water. I mean, I was everything was ready. He finally found the stairs. He gets out, and we, I play with him. I said, I'm like, yeah! Like, I celebrate. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah! Woo! Laughing and having a good old time with it. And the whole point being, well, he needs to learn something here. I have to swallow whatever nervousness I have and, and worry I had. I had to, you know, but I was getting ready. And I think that's missing. I think most people just immediately react if there's emotion. They don't take this moment and, and go, okay, wait, let's – all right, what's happening? Is, wait, he's figuring it out. You know what I mean? And, I, and I, I mean it's across all kinds of things. That's just an example I can think of. Well, we're either overcompensating or undercompensating. So people will say they got to figure – let the dogs figure it out on their own. That's the most yeah. dangerous thing I've ever heard, which is sort of what you're saying. But you are understanding what you are getting ready to do. You're understanding I what the dog is going through. But most people, are they, they don't understand. So they let the dogs figure it out. And let's just look at their history where they've been isolated, alienated, no socialization, no, no outlets at all. Let's let them figure it out. That's not going to end well because well, they don't have The other one sense. is uh, um, just let, let dogs be dogs. And I think Cesar said one time, he's like, if you let dogs be dogs, they're going to let dogs be dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, what I like is when they – it's funny how people get real natural as they let dogs fight it out. And, you know, the same dog, you know, and then they humanize them on the next breath. Or um, that's the same person that also thinks because I feed one dog first, I'm making it dominant. Mm. Oh. That kind of mindset of, of how I can make one dog, like if you want to use the word dominant or pack. Well, I let one dog come in first and I let one dog. You, know, eh, well. you could trigger some serious aggression yeah. on understanding their ranks and, and system. And Good. Talk about that. How? So how can you trigger? Say, I've, you know, we all have these conversations, right? So how can you trigger 
people I, early on, Lynn, I don't know if you remember this. I don't know if we talked about this. Very, very early on, you made us record our appointments. Mm -hmm. and, and you I, didn't very many. What's that? <laughs> and you didn't send me very many. I sent um, you a couple of them. I remember one of them. I was, I was uh, having a disagreement with a client, and you pointed out that the dog was looking back and forth. And you, you go, he's waiting to see who wins. Right. Right? He's waiting to see which side he is on. <laughs> so little things like that have always forever stayed with me. And, you know, part of what it takes to have multiple dogs in a house is to understand that every dog is seeing everything that's happening to everybody and everyone else. So if you treat the weakest dog a certain way, you can create an issue just like you can if you, like, baby somebody at the, at the playground. If you baby the pussy at the <laughs> playground, they're all going to come bully on them. It's just the natural social tendency. Unless – you give them the power like I did with Tuxedo. I'll take a, a dog or a weaker individual and build them up and put them in a position of authority and make sure that everybody understands this is the authority, not pamper them and put them in front of everybody and then leave them there like that. That's going to cause the problems you're talking about right there. So they need to see that what this dog or what this kid says is the rule because I'm giving him the power. And if I'm not here, the more I'm there, like with Tuxedo, the more I'm there to follow through on what Tuxedo is saying, the more they just automatically stop looking at me and just start saying Tuxedo is the one. When he says something, we got to move out of the way. And then he can do that without me there because it's been associated to their, their physical memory. But you can really be bad uh, influencer, encourager. You could be a, a flammable by no no you let now you back up you let him go first you know that that's bad <laughs> and it's worse if you're not paying attention because they are like i said they're studying everything and the second you get out of the view they're gonna take the, take advantage of it. unless you're working with dogs that aren't yours and you're trying to get them together and you're a dog trainer and you don't really understand the conversation and you're trying to train one with sound and the other one just doesn't like what's happening. What and it boom goes in there and gets it. You have to pay attention to what they're saying all the time. I don't know if that answered your question or not, Todd. Um, did I answer the right question? Did I? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Did, did you have something you want to add, Art? Yeah. Sorry, Art? sorry. I was coughing. I was I, I muted myself. I've been a little sick. Um, uh, no, I mean I I do the same thing as far as is like how I get the dogs in, even how I feed them. Um, there's a certain order every single day, how I get the dogs in. We just got a new dog. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I, I found a dog tethered outside my jujitsu gym. Um, really freaking awesome dog. It actually reminds me of, like, of Dorian's dogs. Same little, you know, not yeah. as big, smaller, uh, but very amazing energy. Yeah. What's that? Low, low, center, low of center of gravity. She is dense. She's small, but heavy. Um, and so I found her outside my gym and I thought she belonged to somebody. Anyway, so I brought her home. Uh, actually I took her to the shelter first and then they were, you know, at 135% capacity or 35% over capacity. And it was going to be like a two hour wait before I could even take her in. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I don't have two hours, uh, bring her home. And I could just tell like her energy was so good that I, I, I just knew like some people like, Oh, well, you know, take it slow and, you know, do it. There's a, the three, 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 where like, you know, three weeks before you do this and three uh, or three days and three weeks and then three months, these are things that you should do in, in this time frame. you know, but I just, and I, I, I mean, I, I think for the general public, that's a good practice to do. But for me, I saw this dog's energy and I just knew that this dog was going to be a really good fit, like just a really good fit. So I brought her in and sure enough, I, I have a, even how I intro the dogs to the house, I'm bringing a dog, I, I bring in a certain dog depending on the energy that's coming in, right? So if I have a more happy-go-lucky, I'll bring a happy-go-lucky dog out, which is my dog Buddha or Pickles. Uh, or if it's a dog that's kind of forward, I bring out Buddha. But this dog was sensitive. She was a sensitive dog. And so I bring out my sensitive dog, which is Nala. So Nala comes out, smells her, and this dog just rolls over. And I'm getting information. This is how I'm getting information also, how this dog is by how she reacts to my dogs and how my dogs react to her. Um, and so she's been amazing. She's been here. But the funny thing was that she started to get this little dog started to get a little more confident and started yeah. you know, moving around. It's always that honeymoon phase. So sure enough, what is, and I got it on video too. I, I got it on video where Nala just kind of like chest bumps her and knocks it over and then kind of like stands over her, but then moves away. And the dog just like lays down like, Oh, am I supposed to do that? 
And I just let and that is that is when I say I'm gonna let him do that. I know my dogs well enough to allow those things to happen. You know. Well, you gotta watch it. You gotta, you know, we, and we know you have to do it with limits because it quickly. Right. But, and that's too because that whole honeymoon phase is, man. I learned like early on when I first moved to Florida. I'd only been doing this a year or two. When I first moved here, I went to a rescue and I said, "Give me your worst dog." And they gave me this super, super, super nervous dog, and I kept it for a while. And to your point, uh, after a little while, I had peeled back enough layers of like the nervousness. All of a sudden, I, I think somebody had knocked at the door or something, and the dog just went, dur, 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 dur. I was like, whoa, where did that come from, mm-hmm. right? And you start to realize as, as you're pulling this stuff back, you're, you're either removing this layer of stuff that was inhibiting, you know? And so people, I think the mistake, that, and that mistake is people make what? Let the dog figure it out? The dog needs time. You know, they always go into that. The dog needs time. They need to figure it out as opposed to you always having that plan, always making sure that you know it. Because if, you did, if your dogs didn't check it, you would have checked it. You know, you're, you know it, it's keeping everything in, as what's in front of you. I had a client the other day. They were like, well, he normally doesn't do that. And I go, hey, I get what you're saying. But I go, a good idea is to never, never allow a phrase like that to even enter. Like mm-hmm. what's in front of you right now is what's in front of you right now. The whole normally thing is a real stumbling block for people because it it takes you out of the ability to deal with the situation. You know, so you have this dog that was really sensitive, all of a sudden it gets really hyped up and starts to act pushy. And you sit there for a few minutes and go, Well, you normally, you know, you were. Yeah. As a, you know, as opposed to staying with what it is and then and moving with it. People That's what's are, happening uh, with this dog, by the way. The same thing with this dog. So I uh, she started I, I was kind of feeding um them all together. Um and so I I have a, a laundry room where, where the dog food is at and I feed um, two of my dogs in the laundry room uh, just because that's, that's where they kind of stay when I'm, it's right here next to me. So when I'm in the studio, they're like in the laundry room or here with me. Uh, but that's where the food was at. And so, uh, and sh- I kept her in there in the beginning. Uh, and I, and I noticed that she started to kind of guard the area. She was, it, it wasn't that she was making sound. It was the look that she was giving. And I was like, nope, we're not having this right now. We're not getting, we're not starting this, like, you know. Um, and so I started, you know, kind of working her through, through things. Um, and, you know, she's coming around. She's, she's, I don't even have to have a leash on this dog, Todd. She's freaking amazing, dude. Like, she's like Dorian's dogs. Like, she is yeah. awesome. So, you know, when we brought Blue home, the, the, the uh, Shepherd Husky mix, uh, she was home, she was home uh, a couple of days. And my wife calls me just, both mad and sad and scared at the same time and mr pickles and her had gotten in a fight in the kitchen right behind her you know so it was in in, in, and contained so she thought it was over food and you know i came home and whatever the the food was i just put it on the ground if that was but would have been the food i mean it's well past it it's not like i'm disciplining it it's more or less like fuck if this is what it's gonna be, you know. So put it right down. Let's just get let's get to it. Or if you, if anybody's gonna possess, let's do it now that I'm here. And and then it's like okay, now we know this exists. And and like you said, now you know it exists. Now we can do something. So immediately there's you know you put things in place. And it's you got to pay attention to it. But if you stay focused on it for how long do you guys think if you stay focused on it the human gets stuck? Because you know my both right now I have I wouldn't even blink or have a, a flash of a thought that if I had food in here that they would fight even though that when they first came together it was one of the first things that they did like I don't know how easily and how quick you guys let things go but I know the average human has a hard time and by him you know client of that and that really inhibits it because you stay up tight for so long around the situation around the food around the social situation and you can't let it go and it goes back to the whole thing about like when dogs fight the human can't let it go mm-hmm and that's why the, the tension stays in the room and everybody's waiting for it. I actually had this conversation the other day. Somebody brought a dog to me and it was aggressive. Not aggressive, that wrong word. It did, she goes, it doesn't like my husband and it doesn't like my son. And I said, well, you know, let's talk. And we start talking. I go, well, there's a couple of reasons. I go, your dog, your husband's got a really strong energy or you and your husband aren't getting along. And it's all these little things, you know, because this dog had really glommed onto her. Hmm. And, you know, and as soon as it feels safe with something, just like the room you brought that dog home in. It's amazing how quick, if you make it feel safe, how it might start to possess you, you know, and, the, both, and her daughter looks at me and goes, yeah, they sleep in separate rooms. And so it's, you know, it's the smallest things you get, you tense up and you have one dog in your house and your husband owns the other dog and you guys aren't getting along 
and you guys walk in the room together and that tension flares up. So many of these things I've seen along the years cause fights. And and people downplay it. They don't know how much I think their their vibe towards each other or towards the dogs can play into this. The contagion. The contagion, yeah. So oh, what we go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I mean Lynn, go ahead. I was just gonna talk about which all the same root, even though the subject and uh, context shifted a little bit, but each time you bring a dog in, and I'm talking to anybody and everybody, I understand, and you guys know, everybody knows, that they know what they're doing. So when you bring a dog in, it's automatically a rule number nine. Everything is new and different. And what they're looking to do is find out how to establish a new norm. And so when we bring a dog in, let's say we use Art's dog that he found, uh, first of all, I found it. It's cute as hell. It's sweet as hell, but it's brand new. Everything is brand new. We don't know how long the dog has either been at that location, what its life was like before that, whoever it is. And so when it's new, when you walk into a new school, you've got a, a mask on until you've observed how everything goes and you find where your click is or whatever, or somebody invites you into it. And then your mask slowly starts to come off on who you actually are. And so when you bring a new dog in, you have to be careful that once that mask comes off, it's not some monster. Like you're seeing the little possess or the uh, guarding uh, signs. And then not, uh, Nala's saying, hey, you need to knock it down. So the honeymoon phase, there's a lot of freedom. And so the dog says, hey, this is, I can bring out who I am, I think. I think, I think I can unveil who I am. And sometimes that unveiling is like a big fight behind it in the kitchen or something worse. I thought this is how we were. I thought that we were doing this. So by giving so much freedom or feeling sorry for them or whatever, you, you give them permission to, to do these other things that we may not like and say, oh, wow, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, right. give zero everything and then provide, provide, provide. Take away, provide, take away, mm -hmm. hold away, hold away. And I'm talking to everything. Uh, and I'm not saying they don't get to eat or anything, but I'm, everything is so dictated. You're saying, saying you're take away love. So you're taking away love, asshole. Yeah, fuck stick. <laughs> by the uh, way, I, that's a good point, by the way, because I, I, one little detail I forgot to mention. So my, my in-laws are in from Germany right now, okay? And so um, Anne's uh, stepmother loves this dog that I found, right? So she's been giving a lot of affection and, and, and I have to tell her like, Hey, can you not do that? And this is where the first thing happened, by the way. So she was outside. I was on the side of the house and, oh, and, and say right there. she went into a new and different life. And then you had new and different people who weren't following the dog psychology rules and giving extra affection. So she, right. It's new and different. So, so then, wow. so then, uh, pickles came around and you know, she's a very happy go lucky dog. And, and it came here and I heard, Arr! so she kind of like, like pushed her out. And I was like, okay, let me see what happens. So I go, what happened? She was, oh, uh, Nogi, that's what we named her Nogi. Nogi uh, was pushing out to pickles. And I was like, hmm. So I said, let me, let me see. And I just wanted to watch. I was watching it. And sure enough, that's what it was. But it was because of how the dog started to become uh, very de codependent of that affection, right? And so I didn't have any of that stuff. And not that I don't give the dog affection. I do. I give it very subtle, very calm affection but this was a lot of excitement you know and so it I, and i told my wife I like i mean i had to tell her i told my in-law like hey don't be doing that so now the way we have it set up is like i'm only outside with all the dogs now if she's going to be around the mother-in-law she has to give she has, she can only be alone with the dog but and still give her some rules on what she's supposed to do that's the thing right there that's missing <laughs> is that you represent rules and testing of the rules so that's when you're seeing a little guarding this or that so it's just testing to see if you're going to be strict with the uh the rules and or whatever love she came in she's new she is a novelty to all the dogs and she picked me and i'm a new dog i must be special i'm gonna protect this because no rule is coming from her or ever been established by her she's just there to provide this love that she's actually getting too She's getting a lot out of it or she wouldn't be giving it. And so this dog doesn't see any structure. It's just a, a possession now or yeah. something of value that values me more than it values you. And I'm going to keep her. Uh, so, again, that's new. It's all new. And you're doing it right. You're 
beginning again and saying, hey, look, we've got to have some rules, even if it's just having the dog sit for a second or down for a second, some sort of a instruction. Any uh, moment of regret, Art? What? Any moments, like, any moments of regret where it feels like it doesn't fit? No. I mean, honestly, she's so sensitive. This, this is the thing, by the way. You're learning. I know so. that she's a really sensitive dog, too. So I'm using that to my advantage. So I know that if anything were to arise, I, I can always, um, you know, use that sensitivity to help her out. You know, if she wasn't sensitive, um, and what I mean by that yeah. is I, I can make a sound. I, I can, and she's like, whoa. And it's not overwhelming. It just puts a pause on what, what she's about to do, follow through, slow her down, relax. But okay? that required you to be there every single second right. if, there's, if it's worse. But well, that's like I, I did a post where I said, you know, to go off leash, I have to have a sound to stop them and the ability to bring them back. And some dogs just come to you. They're sensitive enough that they don't want to be too far away. They want the, the safety, you know, and, and just they just come pre-wired to be off leash. They come pre-wired to follow. doesn't mean they won't throw out the shit you're talking about, you know, but it, at least like I, I know exactly what you're saying is it's if there's the off switch is there. Everything that you need essentially is there. Now it's just doing the work. Yeah. You know, it's putting in the time and putting in the repetition, whatever area. It's not as smooth as it needs to be. And by the way, I think that's a, another thing that I think should be talked about is because, you know, people's dogs, people do have dogs that get in a fight. Like what's something they can do? And I mean, for me, uh, I, I think that's why the walk is so valuable. It's such a valuable key in any relationship with a dog is when you bring home a dog, walk them together. When you come home, don't let them have the free time. You know, put them on a leash inside the house in the beginning. Uh, and if something does happen, take them on a walk. Let that, that you're, we're coexisting. We're doing something together and we're doing something in the same movement. We're all doing the same thing, you know? And so um, that's what this dog, she came in, we went on a walk with the dog. She goes on a walk with all our dogs now, like no, no issue, you know? Because um, she's part of the pack. Like she, we brought her in and she just fit right in. And everyone is, has, for the most part, accepted her. I only say for the most part, only because Luna, our oldest dog, she's the one that I've talked about in the past where, you know, she's kind of in retirement. She's not, she doesn't want anything new. She's happy to just be with us, you know? So I, I kind of watch her just because she can, she's older. She's getting a little more grumpy. Uh, I'm getting another, another dog with a little more energy. And so I don't want anything to happen. I don't want to, to imprint anything from the beginning. But we well, all the other that you look for is, or at least that I look for is, <clears throat> know that there might be something here and there so i don't know if you go through, through this so the assessment process for me is like okay i can stop her okay good now we have this yeah now what may or may not set this dog off right is it is it going to be space related like resource or possession related or excitement related for me right so you can categorize excitement as you know squirrel on the fence somebody knocking at the door too much play you know and then some dogs like you're saying may get a little possessive so now you have some space or resource type of stuff Right. And so then I'm like starting to see if anything triggers that. I'm, I'm looking at those things. And shit, I just lost my track of thought because there's three things. There's three, there's three things that are basically that I'm, I'm, bas I'm looking for to, to see where I'm going to move them to the next level as far as the acceptance, as far as triggering the acceptance and everything. Fuck, what was I going to say? It's hilarious. Well, while you're thinking about it, uh, the walk is fantastic and everybody should do that whether you have a good dog, bad dog, or a brand new dog. But what a walk is, is actually part of a structure that's the day. And it's a daily thing. That means that the walk is actually structured in itself. It's got a preparatory stage, an execution stage, and a conclusion stage. And now this event then fits into uh, a series of events that make up the day. And if I got a dog that just starts fighting or it's brand new, no matter what, but if everything begins again and we go over every ounce of the structure of the day to make sure that there isn't any leak where the dog believed, well, that this isn't being taken care of for me, so I have to do it. And it's not in this context, but I feel like it's in this other context too, so I'm going to do this now. Somewhere along the line, the dog isn't on your track. So I just start all over. Everything's at zero. It could go really fast, like by the end of the day, everything's back to normal, or it could be a week. It depends on the context, the new dog, how long, or if it's an older dog that's been there for a while and wants to retire, but now this thing starts up. But it, now it ignited a thing inside a brand new puppy type dog who happens to be this breed. And now it fails. I got to do this all the time. So we really want to manage all of that 
And this management is a form of leadership. But knowing every bit, every bit of it, beginning to end, then the dog will let go or you'll have to keep doing it to prove to the dog that it can let go. So you were saying something about if they do it, I want to be able to turn it off. Right. Great, turn it off. For me, if I'm going to use your your thing, now I need to teach the dog it can turn it off. And then I need to teach the der dog, Dirk, that it never needed to turn it on. Yep. So we get that far down the line where the dog is making such amazing choices that if I'm not paying attention or I come in late or something extreme happens, then I can turn it off because we've you know, done all. A way I like to to help people simplify it is that I, I don't have, I've never taken the approach I'm trying to get dogs to like each other. So if I bring in a new dog, my goal, I, my, my end goal is, I guess that would be the explanation, but essentially what I've, I'm doing is just removing a category of options, right? So you can't, you can't fight and argue with each other and you can't hide from each other. And you then like fight or argue, you do, you check in with me and see if it's something you need to fight or argue about. Well, or, basically or, what I'm saying is, so I, I so people, maybe don't think that the goal is to get dogs to like each other because we're playing with a more simple instinct. If I can move the option and leave an option of acceptance or happy go lucky for you, but remove the options of getting it above that or the ability to stay away, then it kind of takes care of itself, right? Like I can't force a dog to like another dog, but I can remove the options that will prevent it from liking another dog. And I think right. that's a, a way that to me is a very simple way to look at it. it and it takes away a lot of the pressure of, of I think what we go through of thinking we need to get our dogs to like each other. They have to be compatible if they're going to have a relationship. But even compatible dogs have this adjustment period that you have to help them through. And yeah, that's yeah. They don't need to like each other. All those right. dogs in the facility, most of them would want to kill each other. But they coexisted and even enjoyed themselves. They just didn't need to like the other guy. Right. And, and nobody needs to like another person or anything, but you do have a certain social uh, requirement of how you behave when you're in those situations. Calm avoidance or calm surrender. I mean, it depends on, it depends on what you're trying to do. All right. So people like wait, earlier, if, if your dogs are ignoring each other, that's going to, that's going to end one way or another, pretty much not good. Right. If your dog is nothing doing, but nothing, but ignoring something it has to accept, that's, that's always going to have an ending. But I mean, you can, we calmly ignore everything on the street. You don't talk to the people you see out in public. We calmly ignore them. I think that's acceptable. In the airport? People need to... What's that? At the airport? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the people that sit next to you in those type of places, it's just, you got to be able to see it. Cool. Yeah. You, you move away from somebody who makes you feel weird right away. And that you don't tell them that they're making you feel weird or unless they've intruded. Oh, I... I just, I say, I mean, you're just not going to, unless they've done something, I'm not going to say anything to them. If they've done something to make me feel weird, I don't need to involve them in my decision to get away from them. That's just a waste of time. And now I got a debate with this person about whether they're weird or not. No, I, don't, I don't have time for that. And so that's what we want the dogs to do. It's like, you know, we don't get along so well. So if, I see you know, people like want to learn how to practice knowing if dogs like each other. I think a good example, I always use this is you don't even have to study dogs. You can look at people through glass. I always use that. So, watch things with like species or people silently you know we have two cats and we're trying to you want to figure out if the cat likes the kitten which direction is it moving in reference towards the kitten right so if the kitten's right here and the cat's right here and the cat's moving towards the kitten, you know what i mean so i mean yeah. i think it's a way to do it so let's wrap it up and if if you know you guys out there need any uh have any questions leave them because we'll uh, we'll answer them we can do a break it down for you guys or have some videos for us. And that way we can include you more in it. Since we've gone through uh, 10 episodes, I think what we have been talking about uh, is maybe doing a, a live. It'd be kind of cool to do a live. We can kind of set it up. Um, and then also we've been getting a lot of feedback, which we ha are listening guys. We are trying to make some changes. Uh, some of the feedback that you guys have been giving us and some of the questions. So we are listening to you guys. Do not think that we're ignoring you guys or not because we're not responding to you, but we are uh, going to sit down and talk about those things. So, And that's, that's what I was saying in the last post of announcing it. We're still learning the psychology of how this show is going to work, what is best for everybody, what they want, what we want, what then learning each other's algorithms. We're still learning all of that and the ins and outs of the technology. We're getting close to being more involved with everybody. We're just 
still trying to figure this whole thing out yep. so we can bring the best show to you. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Have a good one.